Thank you. How are you? There are many critics out there who say that this, there's grave danger in instilling a philosophy in youth that everybody can get a trophy. You know what? I totally disagree with that. When I was seven, I received a gift for my birthday that would forever change my life. The Guinness Book of World Records. After the Bible, the Koran, and Mao's Red Book, it is the best-selling book of all time. From the moment I opened the book, I was transfixed, reading about all these extraordinary people around the world who were pushing the limits of human achievement in all kinds of unique manners. There was Robert Wadlow, the world's tallest man. There was、uh, Sridhar Chalal, who had those long, curly fingernails. And there was、uh, Ethel Granger, who had the world's smallest waist—13 inches, ladies, 13 inches.、Uh, these people were my childhood heroes, and I knew from a very early age that I wanted to someday set a world record myself. For years, I would flip through my Guinness book, flipping pa-、uh, marking pages, and looking for world records that I thought that maybe someday I could I could try and beat. But my skills and interests were far away different from the feats that I was reading about. Sure, I'm tall, but I'm not eight foot eleven inches, and I'm relatively thin. But come on, thirteen inches—that's just crazy. I was into weird stuff like beatboxing and pinball. And quoting The Simpsons, these were categories that the Guinness Book would never, in a million years, have any interest in. Those prim and proper Brits in their stuffy suits—they were more interested in traditional feats. They reject a huge percentage of submissions that come into them as not being interesting enough. So my life journey continued, and I、um, still was on a quest to someday set a world record. In 2002. I went out to the Burning Man Festival. Burning Man is an annual festival held in the Nevada desert,、uh, built around a spirit of community and participation.、Uh, if you've never been before, I highly suggest you go next year. Inspired by the creativity and wanting to participate, I said to my friends, "Why don't we create a camp where people can invent their own world records?" So we got a bunch of measuring tapes. We got some stopwatches. We put on some yellow sports coats in an attempt to look official. And in 2004, we headed out to the desert.、Uh, we created a camp、uh, called the Playa Book of Records,、um, and it was really very simple. We just basically had people come up, and we would say, "Invent any world record you want, and we will document you setting these world records." So you just get a glimpse of it here. Um, and over the years, we just saw extraordinary and really weird and crazy and extraordinary feats—feats、uh, feats like the most times jumping back and forth over one's own leg, <laughs> the fastest accordion rendition of "The Devil Went Down to Georgia," and a woman named Donna Cramp, you can see here, who set a world record for the most blueberries fit in a belly button. <laughs> if, you're in, if you're interested, the mark is ten. She had a great inny. <laughs> These were not the kinds of world records that I was reading about in Guinness Book as a child. These were new kinds of world records, and in my eyes, they were still unique, authentic world records. So, on August 30th, 2008, after dreaming about it for over 25 years, I finally decided it was time to step up and set my very own world record. Hi, my name is Dan. I'm gonna try and set the world record for the most times whistling "Happy Birthday" in 60 seconds. Ready, set, go. Yes, yes, I had finally done it. Fifth, I whistled it 15 times in one minute. And at long last, could say that on a planet which had over six billion people, I was truly the world's best at something. It didn't matter what my world record was; it just mattered that deep inside I had a sense of self-esteem and confidence that came from really, truly feeling that I could stand out in my own unique manner. And it was just an amazing feeling. After documenting all these world records at Burning Man for five years. I felt like there was an opportunity to take this and figure out how to get the entire world in involved. Inspired by Wikipedia 
and the way it was using the internet um, to uh, democratize encyclopedic information, I thought there was an opportunity to do something similar with human achievement. So my friend Corey Henderson and I built a website, uh, which we launched uh, in 2008. Uh, it was originally called the Universal Record Database. It's now called uh, Record Setter. Um, and it was a really simple platform. We put up some of the Burning Man videos, and we said, send us in any world record you want. Uh, our, core, uh, our core rules were uh, that record submissions have to be quantifiable, breakable, and you need media evidence. But we in no way wanted to judge and say, that's, not, that's too weird or that's too outlandish. Um, and then we also created three basic principles. Uh, don't hurt yourself, don't hurt others, and don't hurt the planet. So we put up the site, we emailed our friends, and we waited. And a few days after we launched, uh, our first submission came in from Perth, Australia, a guy named Daniel Fowler, who sent us this world record for the most uh, giraffe tattoos on a shoulder. One. And I have to say, when this submission came in, it was just thrilling. Here was a guy on the other side of the planet who had the same dream that I did, which was just to hold some kind of a world record. It didn't matter what it was about. It was such an obscure category, but he held his own world record. Then things started to get interesting. A couple months later, a radio station in San Diego found Daniel's record, brought a tattoo artist into their studio, and asked if any listeners would come in and beat Daniel's record. Lo and behold, much to the chagrin of his girlfriend, Mike McDonald came in and got three giraffe tattoos, really taking this category to the next level. A few weeks after that, I came into my office, we looked at the submissions that had come in overnight, and Daniel Fowler from Australia... <laughs> <laughs> had responded, he really wants to hold this world record. So uh, if you want to attempt this world record, this is the current feat. We've heard rumors that there are people who are going to beat it, but Daniel Fowler currently holds the world record in this category. Over the past five years, we've received over 25,000 world records from more than 85 countries worldwide. We see categories as outlandish as the fastest time solving a Rubik's Cube while riding on a unicycle the most time smiling while listening to Beat It, and uh, the tallest marshmallow tower made using one's mouth. So you can see that people are just getting really creative and finding extraordinary ways to be the world's best at something. Have a look at this record, which still blows my mind. My name is Chad Lunders. Today, I will be attempting to do the fastest recitation of Hamlet's To Be or Not To Be Soliloquy, saying all 261 words well, balancing at all times on a roller bola on top of a picnic table while juggling knives. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question whether it is noble in the mind, silver the things narrow, about rage, fortune, or to take arms against the sea, troubles, by posing in them. To die to sleep, no more, by things to say we in the heart again, a thousand objects, sharks, and pushes there to disconsummation of all these we wish. To die to sleep, to sleep, for chance to dream. And there's a rope running, sleep to death, which reads we come. Give it up for Chad, right? <laughs> He's one of my new personal heroes. Uh, just FYI, it was 41.34 seconds if you're thinking of beating it. Uh, Chad also went on to set a world record for the fastest violin rendition of the Star Spangled Banner while balancing a 10-foot ladder on his chin. The core philosophy we have at Record Setter and what I'm talking about today is a belief that truly everybody can be the world's best at something. Uh, that includes kids. We see a ton of world records coming in from youth groups, summer camps, and classrooms worldwide, and hear from parents who watch their children uh, find a sense of self-esteem by setting world records themselves. I want to show you this one from a guy named Elm Cat in uh, Kent, England. Hello, I'm going to do most arm parts done in 20 seconds wearing a t-shirt. Go. I mean, how awesome is Ellen Cat, right? These people are truly, to my mind, the stars of tomorrow. Uh, Ellen did 56 armpit farts in 20 seconds, and, 
And again, I just love seeing how committed he is and how he truly wants to discover his inner greatness through his uh, better than average arm, armpit farting abilities. A lot of, uh, a lot of organi organizations and charities are using Record Setter to set world records as a way to raise both funds and awareness for social causes. So we've worked with organizations like Red, Livestrong, and the Red Cross to do a lot of really interesting uh, charity-based world records. Um, this next feat was set by a, a group in California called the 46 Mamas. And they're a group, uh, all, they're all moms who have children who have been uh, battling cancer. And so they decided to set a world record uh, for the largest group to shave heads in solidarity with somebody battling cancer. Um, all their kids are dealing with it. And as part of a quest to raise over a million dollars for the St. Baldrick's Foundation, which is a charity organization uh, that is funding childhood cancer research. So these are 46 moms uh, from all over North America. Uh, they've now turned this into an annual tradition. Um, and yeah, I, I'm tru truly inspired by uh, what these women have done. And, uh, I um, think it's amazing that they're using a world record to, again, raise awareness and also money for a cause that means a lot to them. Now, because I've been talking about participation and this core belief that everybody can be the world's best at something, I thought it would be fun if we attempt a world record here today at TED Brooklyn. Are you guys open for that? You guys want to make world history? I can't hear you. Let's make some noise. All right, this is going to be super fun. So we are going to create a brand new record category. It's called the Loudest Charity Scream. So here's how it's going to work. I reached out to friends and family uh, earlier this week and have raised $25 per decibel that we as a room are able to generate. $25 per decibel, and we're going to donate all the proceeds to the St. Baldrick's Foundation, which is the organization that 46 Mamas support uh, that's funding childhood cancer research. So it's very simple. The louder we can make this room, the more money will be raised for the St. Baldrick's Foundation. Are you guys ready to set a world record? OK, so uh, Steve, uh, my assistant, is going to come out uh, with a decibel meter. Uh, we need to scream for about 10 seconds, and this will, this will measure the, uh, peak, the peak level. Um, so I'm going to do a countdown. Let's come on, loosen up, guys. It's the end of the day. We've got to raise a lot of money for St. Baldrick's. OK, here we go. Save some energy as loud as we can make it. On your marks, get set, go. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Wow, congratulations, 108 decibels. So uh, we have just raised, if my math is correct, $2,700 for the, uh, the St. Baldrick's Foundation. So congratulations to all of you. And what, what's more exciting is we will now put this world record onto Record Setter and hopefully inspire other groups to raise the bar. I don't know who's going to beat 108 decibels, but uh, ho hopefully there are people out there. So let me go back to the first thought, these critics who, who uh, think there's danger in uh, telling youth that, um, that, everybody, uh, that, there's, that there are problems with this everybody deserves a medal philosophy. Um, I'm not going out there and saying that uh, losing teams should get trophies. I'm not going out there and saying that kids deserve medals for everything they do. But the idea of saying that we need to teach kids there are winners and losers and some of them are going to be losers, well, that's just depressing to me. I think we should just reframe this, this, this way of thinking, and we should say that there is true greatness inside of every single person on this planet, and we all have the ability to go out there and find our trophy that we truly deserve to win. Um, and if we, can, if we can inspire in the youth of tomorrow uh, a, this positive thinking that they truly have it inside themselves to be great, well, I just think that positive message is going to have such a wondrous impact. So let's uh, hopefully think about a society where everybody has the confidence to look inside themselves, um, find their inner greatness, no matter how weird or crazy or outlandish it might be, and then go out there to the real world and, uh, and do what they can to bring it to life. Uh, if we can succeed in making a world like that, well, 
that would be a place I would be pretty stoked to live in. So thank you.